Jump higher. What'd you say? What? Oh, with my mic check. My, yeah, jump higher, jump higher. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Five, six, seven, eight, jump higher, jump higher. From KVOA, investigating for you. This is News for Tucson, live at 10. The president of Ukraine warns of a difficult night ahead as Russia attempts to seize control of the capital. Thank you for joining us. I'm Amanda Gomez. Sean has the night off. The U.S. and NATO allies are pledging more support, including sanctioning Russian President Vladimir Putin. And in a historic moment, NATO activated its response force to protect nearby allied countries. While Ukraine is not a NATO country, President Joe Biden spoke with President Zelensky today, pledging ongoing economic, humanitarian and security support. Tonight, sources telling NBC News the Biden administration is asking Congress for $6.4 billion for military and humanitarian assistance, humanitarian assistance to Ukraine. We're continuing to look for ways to support Ukraine to, to defend themselves. We have continued to do that, and uh, uh, and we're going to look uh, uh, to do that going forward. At least 100,000 people have left Ukraine, and more than 100 people have been killed so far. As we continue to follow the latest tonight out of Ukraine, a former top FBI official and a local professor are offering some perspective on what the short-term and long-term consequences could be. News for Tucson's Eric Fink joins us in studio now with the story. Eric. Amanda, already high gas prices are expected to go up. The price of a barrel of oil at more than $100 tonight. A professor here in Tucson who grew up in Germany says we could soon see more U.S. troops in Europe to protect NATO. And one national security expert says this war could be centered on the cyber battlefield. This is a horrible time for the world. It's a horrible time for champions of democracy and free people. Former FBI Assistant Director for Counterintelligence Frank Fagluzzi says we are witnessing the largest invasion in Europe since World War II. And as the U.S. and NATO allies strategize how to punish Vladimir Putin, 
Figuzzi says this is uncharted territory, and he stresses the new battleground is cyber. If we attack his online digital abilities to maneuver and, and disrupt his ability to move troops in terms of computer internet denial of service, we can't count on him doing just the same to us. He will go beyond that. Leaving the glue to ask this question of Americans. Are Americans prepared to sacrifice? Do we have the resiliency required to deal with things like internet outages here, not being able to pump gas at gasoline stations, not being able to swipe a card for your morning coffee and pay for it. Pima Community College political science professor Eric Safir grew up in Germany and left right before the end of the Cold War. To quote a philosopher, history has not ended. That uh, this big power struggle that people mistakenly thought had ended with the end of the Cold War, that liberal democracy was ascendant everywhere, that people everywhere were craving democracy and free markets, and the big ideological battle was somehow over. Well, this is the day that should have ended anybody's illusion. And Safir says this invasion of Ukraine will give new purpose and strength to the NATO alliance. And tonight we've learned hundreds of Russian troops were killed as they headed for Kyiv. A senior U.S. Department of Defense official telling NBC News tonight Russia is meeting greater resistance from the, U the Ukrainians than it might first have expected. I'm Eric Fink, News 4 Tucson. Thank you.